Today I want to talk about the ternary operator, what it is and when and why you might use it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about the ternary operator, which is an operator that shows up in just about every programming language out there and it confuses beginners all the time. It's also an operator that you don't usually need, but you might want to use it both because it can make your code a little bit shorter and maybe even cleaner, although that last part's up for debate. We'll talk about that later in the video. But most importantly, as a programmer, this is something you're going to see. No matter what programming language you use, it's gonna show up. The syntax may vary a little bit depending on the language, but the idea is the same. And when you see it, I don't want you to be confused. This video does contain code examples, some C and C++ code. And as usual, source code is available through Patreon. And I just wanna give a huge thanks to all of you who help support this channel on Patreon. Now let's jump into the code. Now for today's video, I wanna look at two different examples. The first one's in C, the second one is in C++. They're just super simple, hello world like programs we're gonna start with. And then I also have a make file here that's gonna compile them. Nothing fancy in the make file. You can check out my make videos if that's new, confusing, or otherwise distressing to you. But let's start with this first example here. Now, all I'm going to do here is to take a few arguments. I'm checking the arguments right here, make sure I've got the right number of arguments. So basically the idea is I'm just gonna take two numbers and then we're going to convert those numbers. We're gonna grab them as integers. And then what I'm gonna do is basically try to grab the maximum number and print out the maximum of the two numbers. Now I've written this code as I would expect a new C programmer to write it with this if else statement down here. And this statement's going to decide, you know, whether we want num1 or num2, which one's the max. And so this piece of code here determines which one is the maximum. And we're going to use this code to explore the ternary operator because if we want, we can replace this if else statement, just comment it out really quick, but we can replace this with something that looks like this. You put num1 is greater than num2 here. So this code is equivalent and it's definitely shorter, but what does it mean? Some people haven't seen this and they look at this and go, well, I have no idea what this means. And so I wanna take you through it really quick. So this ternary operator takes three things. That's what ternary means. It means it has three different operands. The first is a conditional expression. So just like you would pass in as the condition of an if statement. Now in this case, we're just testing to see if num1 is greater than num2. Then after the condition, then you have two additional operands. Okay. And in this example, I just have single variables, but these can be any expression. And how it's gonna work is if this first expression here is true, the max is going to be set to num1. Otherwise, the max is gonna be set to num2. And that's really basically it. It's basically just a single line if else statement that conditionally resolves to one of two different things. But should you do this, is it a good idea? Now, it often makes your code shorter, which we saw, and that's really nice. And as long as your expressions are simple, I think this code is still pretty readable. That is, if the person reading is familiar with the ternary operator. And that's the rub because absolute beginners often are not familiar with it. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't use it, but just that you should always keep your audience in mind. And if this is code that you're passing on to first year programmers, maybe you should expect some confusion. So you might wanna explain what's going on. Now, another upside of the ternary operator is that you know that no matter what happens in this line, the max is going to be updated. It's gonna be set with a new value. And up here with this if else statement, anytime you see an if else statement, you actually need to look into the, into the if side and you need to look into the else side in order to see what's going on. And so there's not, it's not quite as clean of a guarantee that this thing's gonna get updated. So as an upside, I think the ternary operator does give us a bit of quick clarity there. And I think that's nice. Now, what about the downsides? In my opinion, the main downside is that new programmers might be confused. I mentioned that already. And of course, now that you've watched this video, you won't be confused about it, but there are others that might. And second is that as the expressions get more complicated, the ternary operator gets really messy to read, or it can be, even for really experienced programmers. So don't do stuff like this. If what you're doing is complicated, then you might consider either putting all of this nonsense in a separate function or using an if else statement. But in either case, the point is readability. I've seen some really terrible if else statements, so don't be dogmatic about it. Look at the code and see if it seems like something that people will be able to follow, rather than just saying one is better than the other. Now, usually when we're thinking about the ternary operator, I usually see it as a matter of preference, a matter of personal taste. You could use it or not, but it doesn't usually make a big difference to the code. If statements are usually pretty readable, ternary operations, as long as you take care to keep them simple, are usually pretty readable. But we're gonna look and just second, we're gonna look at a C++ example where I think the difference is a little more significant. But first, before I'm getting ahead of myself, first of all, let's just come down here 
and let's compile our code. Just make sure that it's all working and let's run it with a few numbers and it seems to be working just fine. Okay, so that's just in case you were wondering whether the ternary operator actually works. Now let's jump over to this file test example. So here we have another simple Hello World style program. We're just printing something out. Notice that I'm using C out to send a string to standard out. Just, it's basically doing the same thing we did with printf. And you notice that my make file compiled this too. So let's just, I mean, all it's doing is printing out, printing text to somewhere to our terminal. Now, something that comes up a lot in a lot of terminal applications, you'll see a lot of your Unix programs do this, is they give you the option to either send your output to standard out, or you can actually provide a file to write it to. So that's the example that I wanna work with today. Okay, so let's say that if I pass in a file name, then we'll write our text to the file. If there's no file name, then we're just going to write to standard out. And this just gives people that use your tool a little bit of flexibility. And now in this example, I'm just gonna start with the ternary operator, because this is how I recently saw it presented to a bunch of first year programs and so this is the version that was handed to me by some very confused students. So basically what you what you saw is basically they created this ostream reference here called my out. This is the thing we're going to replace C out with. And then basically they had the ternary operator here where they're checking if arg C is greater than one, saying was there an argument passed in? And then we're going to create a new OF stream. So we're gonna open a new file basically with the first argument. And then because of course, because this is our reference, we're going to need to dereference this pointer. And if there is no argument, we're just gonna use C out. And remember this is assigned by reference, of course, not by value because we really wanna manipulate the C out, the, the one that was provided by the C++ standard library and not some copy of it. And, and then what this allows you to do is then come down here and say my out right here. And the idea isn't too complicated, but it blew these students' heads right off their shoulders because there's a lot going on here and they really weren't following it. Because first we have the ternary operator here and none of them had ever seen that before. And second, to understand what's really going on, you need to understand the relationship between pointers and references. They're syntactically different, but they're essentially sort of the same thing. Of course, let me know if you'd like more pointer reference comparison in future videos, if that's still unclear. But third, you also have to understand a bit about inheritance to understand why I can assign an O stream reference to refer to an OF stream object. And of course, all of this is mashed into one crazy line. Line. So for the uninitiated, this line can be really intimidating, but it works. At least I think it works. Let's just let's just try it, compile it, make sure it actually works. So if I run file test, great, we've got that. If I run it with a text file, then you see that we do end up with, yeah, a file that has printing text to somewhere. So that was kind of a slick little trick. We basically had the ability to just change, to basically redirect my output to either a file or to standard out, whichever I happen to prefer at the time. And I accomplished it in one line, which is kind of cool. So this definitely works. But when I first saw this, I have to admit, my first thought was why in the name of all that is good in the world, would you throw that at a bunch of first year students? You're just guaranteed they're gonna be confused. And so when I'm, I'm sitting here with these students and I tried to break it down for them and so what I ended up doing is something like this. I ended up kind of taking this, I'll just comment it so you can see what I started with. But what I started with is I basically tried to break it into its components. So I said, we have an O stream reference my out. And we can talk about what that is, you know, what a reference is versus a pointer. And that I think they were okay with. And then I added an if statement, which was if arg c is greater than one, then my out's going to be equal to new of stream arg v1. So I'm basically just going through and breaking out the pieces like I normally would to illustrate what the ternary operator does. And so I'm taking them through this and trying to illustrate what's going on. The problem, and you can see it with the red squigglies, you get, this, this isn't gonna compile. If I come down here and try to compile it, there is a problem. And that is that in C++, whenever you declare a reference variable like this, you have to have an initializer. You have to immediately set it equal to something and you're not allowed to change what it refers to later on. And of course, in this case, because we're using an if else statement, the assignment comes later. So that's really annoying, but we can get around it basically by making this a pointer up here and we'll update this. Let's just change, get the address of this one, not dereference this because now it is a pointer, not a reference. And then down here, we can say, O stream reference my out equals P my out. Now let's just make sure this works. If we come down here and make, now it's gonna compile and we can come down here. Let me use a different file name so you can see that shows up just fine. And without the argument, 
Now this is gonna work, but it's still a bit ugly. C++ references are often thought of as a way to get around using pointers. In this case, we were not successful in removing the pointer. And explaining this code to my first year friends was a bit more work than I expected, though I think in the end, it was still helpful for me to break it down for them, mostly because they just hadn't seen the ternary operator before. But it was also one of those cases where I thought to myself, you know, this really is kind of ugly. And if I were doing this in a project, I would lean heavily towards using the ternary operator, where I'm usually saying, eh, it's a matter of taste. In this case, I do have a stronger preference. Though all that said, I still wouldn't toss this in front of a bunch of new C++ programmers. Let me know down in the comments what you think, agree, disagree. Also, I know some of you were looking at this code thinking, oh no, there's a memory leak. Jacob, you use new without a delete. Well, oh my, you're right. And it's actually true regardless of which one of these forms I use. So even if we switch back to the ternary operator, it doesn't really matter. The point is I have a new in here that I'm not deleting. And if you're concerned about that, we can come down here and delete. We use our pointer here just for convenience. I could also, of course, just get the address of my out. And then one other thing to keep in mind here is that we only want to do this if we're not writing to C out. Okay, so if P my out is not equal to the address of C out, then we delete it because, of course, you deleting C out could be a problem. So Let's just check that with the if statement like this. Now, of course, this is also a little ugly. And while you really want to get into the habit of always freeing your allocated memory, in this case, I also want to point out that it's strictly not necessary. In fact, your program will run faster if you don't, and there will be no negative side effects because the program is about to end and it's going to clean up all of its memory anyway. And this is something that you're actually going to see in a lot of terminal programs, especially short-lived terminal programs like LS, CAT, GREP, all of these. If you look at the source code, you're going to see that they often don't free their memory, and that's because it's unnecessary. Look, I can tell some of you are getting alarmed here. If you haven't seen my somewhat blasphemous video about why memory leaks aren't always a problem, then be sure to check it out. So like this video if it was helpful, subscribe, and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss next week's video and the video after that. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next week.